And in the synagogue there was a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know, know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. Now, I have a simple question for you to consider for a moment. Why didn't Jesus turn to everybody in the synagogue that day and say, Shh, everybody, quiet down and listen up. Hey, say that again. This man possessed with a devil, even the devils know who I am. Say that again. Why didn't he do that? There's a really good reason. You never, ever, ever tune your ear to devils. Why? In this case, you would say, but, but why not? The, the devil is telling the truth here. You're right. Devils are capable of telling the truth, but it doesn't mean they're truthful people. It doesn't mean that they're, they're beings of truth. The only reason they would ever tell you a truth is to get you to trust them so that you'll believe the deception and the lie that is shortly to come. They will never always tell you the truth. They'll only tell the truth as much as it's necessary to get your trust. So notice how Jesus responds to this man. Look at verse 25. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace, and come out of him. You'll notice the devil, he didn't lie right there. This man possessed, he, he told the truth, but Jesus told him to hold his peace and come out of the man. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. I love that. There's never a time in the New Testament where Jesus interacts with an evil spirit and the evil spirit says, no, I don't want to come out of him. I'm going to stay. When Jesus commands, they always have to, to respond. But you'll notice in scripture there are plenty, plenty of cases where human beings try to do the same thing and the devils don't respond. They stay in the, in the person. Even, even prophets like uh, Moses trying to cast out Satan three times in Moses chapter 1, and he can't do it until he calls upon the name of the only begotten to cast out Satan. Brothers and sisters, there is a power in the name of Jesus Christ to drive back temptation, to drive back the forces of evil and darkness in our life. And we, we could benefit collectively and probably individually from uh, invoking the name of Jesus Christ and asking him to help in moments of temptation and faced with, with evil. Uh, as you see played out multiple times, the devils have nothing, nothing to, to negotiate. They have to depart when Jesus is involved. So Jesus even asks us to use his name or more appropriately, to think on his name more often. We promise every week at sacrament to always remember his name, to take it upon us. I take a couple of additional lessons from this. One, that Jesus is the master of the universe. He has total control. He is the one who has the authority. I also find it interesting, I look at my own life and I think, if the devils obey Jesus, and I don't, do I? <laughs> <laughs> like, if the ones who are actually rebellious against Jesus and still f have to do what he says, am I also willing to be obedient and humble and receive commands and respond to Jesus? So it just, it makes me be a little introspective. I have never thought about that before. That is such an amazing juxtaposition of, of the devils down in hell. They don't have a choice. They don't have agency. When Jesus commands something, they, they have to do it. And yet, you and I, we have agency. We have a degree of freedom to choose, so he'll give us commands, but he doesn't force us. We actually have a choice because we kept our first estate up in heaven. Oh, let us not mess up our, our second estate and choose to reject his voice as those devils did in their first estate. That's, that's a beautiful comparison. I've never noticed that before.